Welcome to Upgrade. I'm your host, Frank the Tank. And today we're going to bring in the Dow XPS 17. Now, 17 is because it has a 17 inch monitor. It's a heavy duty one. It's a little heavy too with the aluminum part too, but it kicks a punch. So we're going to open it up and see what you get when you buy some like this. So we're going to open the bottom. We're going to talk about the inside. We're going to talk about the features it has. And we're also going to do a couple of little tests here and there. So let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, when you buy this machine, you get the a nice full set of keyboard, if you guys see. Where it's not a thick tank key. Uh, the speakers are pretty good. The speakers are actually lined up in here and they're kind of built in there. I wish they had the 10 keys for some reason. I, I, I kind of miss that, you know, especially on a monitor this big. If you're an accountant or you're going to be working with numbers, it'll, it's a little helpful on this. Of course, we got the i, I Intel Core i7, all right? And of course, they, they make it for different models. They have the i9. They even have a Ryzen, but it's more expensive than the rest of them, all right? So on this one right here, if you guys can see, this is made of like a... It's like a rubber end, but it looks like a carbon fiber. That's pretty much it. This is huge. It's compared to uh, an Apple Mac. Now it's it's kind of same comparison that it is, all right? So the keyboard cell lights up, all right? Saving you a lot of power if you're gonna end up using it. Um, you could turn it off, um, you could turn it on. Uh, this is kind of like a, a function here to turn on, but it's actually the power button in here. And, and they don't even lie to you. They don't even say anything. It's just pretty much people are supposed to know that that's the power button. It's in the instructions too. Uh, they do have a fingerprint reader, of course. and But it's not necessary that these times, you know, they use, they use a lot of people use a, a camera identification. And we're also going to do a little test on that camera too. Uh, but the actual system itself, it's very heavy duty. Uh, like that it's um they got rid of that the way you used to put your fingerprints it used to stay on permanent it was a little difficult to remove them i didn't like that feature but now everything's pretty much like coated in this rubber and i like the carbon i always love the carbon fiber that they put in here pretty much uh, setting it up uh, into a different standard but the monitor itself is probably the best thing and we are also going to little show a little video on the actual monitor and how good the quality is but uh, i'm very impressed with the monitor um very impressed with the actual size but the weight is the only thing that kind of draw back so if you're going to be traveling um from plane to plane this is going to be a heavy duty and you need a, a large backpack of course for a 17 inch not not that many backpacks or bag luggages that you can carry this um aluminum base helps it out a lot so you won't damage the actual screen um so that's another plus on it but other than that it's like i said it's a heavy duty so let's go ahead and take a look at the side on the first side right here if you guys can see this is the lock mechanism all right this is where people want to leave the machine on at the office or the home this is where you actually lock it in all right now you do have two type c connections usb c or two you could use them to charge or to transfer files so we're going to go ahead and flip it over to the other side now on this side we got a lot more features of course and the features that we have here it's, of course, a 3.5 jack, audio jack, of course. And this is, could be a dual. It's a digital. So you can use it for your, your audio connection and actually to listen to. So that's a plus right there. On the next to it, it's a SD card reader for you photographers. This is a great machine for photography, for graphic-wise, like I said. This is one way you could actually store your photos and transfer them or review them from here um sd card reader and then you have two usb type c again all right and that's pretty much it that's all the f features that it has on this machine unfortunately there's not that many inputs in here uh that's the only drawback about these machines they kind of phased out a lot of the features like the hdmi connection another um you have the nic card now basically what you're going to need requirement for if you want to use your nic card your landline you're going to require an adapter and that's pretty much it if you have the old technology that needs to be um connected to this like a projector or html they do have an adapter for it too so i'm going to talk a little bit more about the actual system and the performance and see how much heat is dispensing all right so heat dispensing it's pretty good actually i haven't seen any problems with it so far uh overheating unless you're going to generate and you're going to play games a lot on the machine then you're going to create a lot of problems but if you're going to use it for everyday use school or autodesk or any kind of uh, game programming or anything like that you shouldn't have an issue but if you're going to be playing games 24 7 on the machine and acting like a desktop you are going to run into issues down the line so all right so we're now we're looking at the celsius um we just changed to fahrenheit sorry and we're looking at 100 degrees right here right in the center if you can notice right here on this on the edges uh it gets a little hot right here 
and this is just the front of the computer and when you're playing games this is pretty much how you're going to be heating um the heat is is concentrated here and in the corners so um nothing on the side um so we're looking at right here where the inputs this is where it's sucking all the air in and we're getting a 90 right here but look at this extremely hot right there in the cpu and gpu 114 um and, it, and i'm running it i'm actually running a lot of stuff so i could run make sure it could benchmark at the same time this gpu and the cpu can get overheated so we could see how much tolerance it could take so so we're going to test out this camera and the quality is a little poor right now i do have some lighting in here and we are going to turn off a cup we're going to turn off one light to see how well it works with just one light itself and see if we could get that the quality we can see it, it, with lighting it picks up just a little bit um, we're going to turn that back the light. The audio is uh, pretty good. It does adjust and it does recognize your eyes. Uh, the camera is really petite. Um, these cameras in the front are not made for um, good high quality. They just made for, for business pretty much. You know, you're going to conduct teams, meetings, Zoom. Uh, it's compatible with pretty much every platform out there. But um, you're not going to, if you're looking for something quality of it, it's, you're not going to be able to find this. And this is great for, if you're going to stream too, if you're going to be talking to your audience, but the quality itself is a little poor. You have to be in good conditions, good lighting in order to get this going. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this test. All right, let's continue the inside of the actual machine. Now, just to let you guys know, this is probably one of the most difficult machines to open. Uh, you got to be very careful because aluminum and if it kind of bends down if it bends in good corners if you're not careful. So I end up utilizing a bunch of my tools in this kit breaking them and I couldn't really open it very properly. Look at this. And actually I, I, it took a while just to, you know, slowly, very delicate to open it up. So if you're going to open these machines up, uh, be careful, caution how you open them up. So let's go ahead and review it. And very simple. The, the fans are right here very simple and all the vents come out through the back too uh suck in the air blow it out pretty much that's all it is um we have a 97 watts battery which is the large battery it's because this is a heavy duty nvidia which is located on this side nvidia chip is right here and then we got the intel chip on this side now because the battery is large it does require a lot of um, intake, uh, a lot of fan usage, a lot of uh, power supply. So it's just going to drain your battery real quick. If you're playing games and doing other stuff, graphical things, three-dimensional stuff, you're going to eventually drain this battery. I mean, it's a very heavy bulk battery. Of course, easy to replace, you know, removing all the screws, everything else, and alignment. And it's pretty much simple like that. Um, one of the most hardest things to do, if you guys could see this, it's attached to the actual M uh, M.2, uh, which is located here. This is where your main drive is at. Now, they give you a secondary, and this is an empty one right now that you can add anything you want to it. Now, unfortunately, it's not very simple. You notice there's some tape here. That means you have to remove the battery itself. And then they give you little latches here, right here. You guys can see it, but this one doesn't even have it. This is actually just to remove the battery, probably. But we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna avoid. We're not gonna void the 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 warranty on this, of course. Um, a lot of things are different and very odd how they set it up. But this is the way they pretty much set the motherboard. The motherboard sits right in between the battery, between the battery and the actual CPU and GPU. It's all embedded. Um, People are always asking, can you upgrade the CPU and the GPU? No, you can't. It's solder in, built into the system with the firmware. With uh, it, There's no way around that part. part. So you're pretty much screwed on that part. Now, they give you a, a wireless display, a wireless card right here. It's already built in. Everything's set up already, ready to go. Um, nothing fancy other than the fans, real nice fans. I actually like these fans. They actually seem, seem like a lot thinner and they take a lot of more air, uh, air inflow and um, actual um, dispense the air properly too. So all this is covered now. You can't even open it up now. They don't even want you to replace the thermal paste but you can still do it by removing all the screws you guys can see one two three four five all the screws are right here and pretty much the plate comes out with the whole intake it's actually a little bit easier because you could disconnect the bat you could disconnect the fan from here disconnect for the fan from here in this location and you unscrew all the screws around there and it basically pops out just be aware that this is bendable there's copper in there but because they want to make sure that it, everything's embedded so it could 
take nice air intake and keep everything cool uh everything's sealed really good so if you're gonna take this off be cautious about make sure you're gonna cover every single item and, and don't forget the screws to to line them up so uh, uh, that's pretty much it not that much you can do upgrading memory there's only two slots in here so it's pretty much taken one slot right here and you notice now they have some aluminum paper now so it could you know for thermal um so it won't get too hot in here for the actual but it's not it's not for actually it's not thermal paste or, or thermal tape or anything like that it's just basically aluminum paper kind of thing like a sticker um so like i said removing the battery that's the only way you could actually access the m.2 nvme um pretty much you can upgrade add a secondary if you want very simple it will automatically pick up only if you go into um if it doesn't pick up you got to go in bios all right and make sure if you're going to raid this you have to set it up as a raid if you're not going to raid this uh, make sure you take that off that feature because if you don't you're not going to be able to identify this and you're not going to be installing so um there's quite a few um tutorials online so you could do that too so sometimes these are plug and play you just pl pretty much base the you you set up the m.2 and it automatically picks up but occasionally if it does not pick up you're gonna have to go in bios and set it up the battery replacement easy to replace the battery um m.2 drives um and two memory and of course later down the line you could probably end up replacing the thermal paste but that's pretty much what you can do on this so if you have any questions or any comments i'm your host frank the tank and we're out